right, we are here with Phil of HTC. Uh, it's a cryptocurrency phone. Actually, let's start off. Can you tell us a little bit about that just briefly? Yeah, it's called the HTC Exodus. Uh, it's a crypto phone. Uh, we call it a crypto phone. We've reported on it a little yeah. bit. You can, uh, you can call it a Bitcoin phone as well. Uh, it's a phone that basically has a Harbor wallet built in, yeah. uh, Trezor or Ledger kind of built in. Also, you're going to be uh, able to run a node on it, right? Uh, yes, so next month uh, we're, we're coming out with software where you can run a full Bitcoin node. The fact that anybody's even trying that, I think, is a step in the right direction. Okay, well, some people call it crazy, but thank you. I, I appreciate <laughs> you saying it's in the, it. We think it's the right direction, too. Yeah. So being able to run a Bitcoin node, Lightning node, that's the direction you want to head to. But I think at the core, the first most important thing is still empowering you how to own your private keys. Right. I think key management is the most important uh, problem uh, or the problem we have to overcome for mass adoption. You know, how to keep it safe, how to be responsible for it. Do you I think know. in the future, the general public, I'm not talking about the smarter people, but the general public is going to be actually holding on to their private keys or is it probably going to be through like third parties? Uh, talking about the grandmas, the uncles, the mailmen. Re realistically, you know? uh, I don't. I don't know if they could handle it. Sure. Um, well, when you become a grandpa, maybe <laughs> yeah, <when laughs> maybe you can hold your private keys. Right. But I like to well, think. No, of I think you're right. I think mostly third party, uh, but I think we still have at a foundational level. You still need the tools available for people to do you that. You need that option. And you need you need a minority of people to do that as well, right? If it's not, if it's ten percent, fine, but at least it's not a hundred percent where everybody's keys are owned by one central right. authority. That's the dangerous part, right? right. The yeah. point is to decentralize yeah. and distribute, right? Now, if it's only five, ten percent, hopefully fifteen, twenty, or more people that own their private keys, mm -hmm. the better, yeah, right? For sure. And so I agree. I don't expect my grandma to, but I do expect when you become a grandfather yeah. to do it. Yeah. So. All right, cool. Let's get into the big picture type question. Okay. So, let's start off general. Bitcoin is? Bitcoin is the means and empowers you to own your digital assets. Mm. Yeah. And that's the foundation that lays uh, uh, down the infrastructure for you to own your digital identity, digital assets, data, all of that thing. Cool. Yeah. Cool. What do you think is the most, the most common misconception when it comes to... Um, just either new people or even more experienced people. What's the most What's the most common misconception when it comes to Bitcoin? Uh, probably it's it's a scam. Hmm. Uh, it's a scam. Uh, only people use it just to sell drugs. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would say that's. We'll get past that though, right? Yeah. Won't we? Yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I thought we were already past that. Yeah. I so. think we're. I think we are past that. Yeah. It's just you know, as new waves of people come into the space, that's probably the first thing they think of. Yeah. Still. Yeah. yeah. Um, final question. What was it? Oh, yeah. All right. Final question, Phil. With the, um, the looming recession coming for America and possibly the world, um, whether it's this year, next year, how do you think Bitcoin is going to fare in a, in a recession? Um, I think that's where Bitcoin shines the brightest, is when there are geopolitical issues, when there are recessions, where there are unstable governments or inflation in different uh, governments. Um, when, when the world is uh, unstable, Bitcoin is that anti-fragile kind of uh, solution. And so I think Bitcoin will, will, will stand its course. I'm not saying if it's going to go up or down because it'll do both. Right. Uh, but, but it'll definitely come out stronger. I think that's it. So I guess I just, for the 30 seconds, hopefully we can get a sound bite out of this, I uh, invite you to just tell people you should be excited about HTC phone because of this. And hopefully we can just... You should be excited about an HTC phone because if you have a smartphone, it basically allows you to be your own bank. You can buy, you can sell, send, receive, trade, lend, borrow, all on the device. You can, you know, directly go from fiat to crypto, crypto to crypto. Uh, you can start, you know... Uh, of course, when you get Bitcoin and ETH, then you can uh, make some DAI, you can do stable coins, you can lend and borrow, you can do all of that, right? And so it, it empowers you to own, be your own bank, do, provides all the tools for universal basic finance. And that's what I'm most excited about. Boom. Thank you very much, Phil. Appreciate it. All right, man. Two more questions. Let's do it.